so in this video we are going to discuss about the muscles of mastication so which are the muscles of mastication we know that uh, the masseter the lateral and medial pterygoid and the temporalis are known as the muscles of mastication which uh, helps in mastication as well as peace these muscles are derived from the mesoderm of first brachial arch and are supplied by the nerve of the first arch that is the mandibular nerve so we will be discussing one by one the muscles first we will discuss about the masseter muscle I will be drawing the diagram. So this is the ramus of mandible and this is the head of mandible, this is the external acoustic meatus, so head of mandible. And this is the ramus of mandible. And this is the zygomatic arch. So now we will discuss about the origin of the muscle. That is the masseter muscle has two layers. It has got a superficial layer and a deep layer. The superficial layer takes its origin from the lower border of the zygomatic arch. That is anterior two third of the lower border of the zygomatic arch. So this is the origin. That is anterior two third of the lower border of zygomatic This is the lower border of zygomatic arch. So it originates like this. This is a superficial fiber. So superficial fiber takes its origin from the lower border of anterior two third of the zygomatic arch. Superficial fiber. So and now the deep fibers originate from the deep surface of the zygomatic arch. So from the deep surface it is taking its origin like this. So all the, uh, the fibers gets inserted. This is again origin from the deep surface the zygomatic arch and it gets inserted into the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible like this this is the superficial fiber so, and the B fiber So it is getting inserted into the lower part of lateral surface of ramus of mandible. So this is a deep fiber. And uh, what is the nerve supply? It is supplied by the nerve of the first brachial arch that is a mandibular nerve. So it is supplied by the masseter branch of anterior division of mandibular nerve that is a nerve supply and what is the action of this muscle this muscle it causes movement like this so that is it causes elevation of mandible and thereby it closes the mouth elevation of mandible and it closes sorry mouth So that's all about the masseter muscle. And next muscle we are going to discuss about is um, the temporalis muscle. Temporalis muscle. For that we will draw the diagram again.
so this is a superficial temporal line giving attachment to the temporal fascia superficial temporal line giving attachment to the temporal fascia so and this is the temporal fossa so this muscle is getting origin from the temporal fossa it is originating from the temporal fossa and uh, the anterior fibers are vertical and the middle fibers are oblique and the posterior fibers are horizontal so it passes like this and it is insert getting inserted into this process is known as the coronoid process coronoid process So it is getting inserted into the borders and surfaces, deep surface of coronoid process and also to the anterior border of the ramus of mandible. So this is the ramus of mandible. This is the anterior border of ramus of mandible. So this muscle is originating from the temporal fossa and also from the temporal fascia. So this is the temporal fossa and it is getting inserted into the margins and deep surfaces of the coronoid process and the anterior border of ramus of mandible so this is a temporalis muscle so and what is the now supply of this muscle now supply is it is getting deep temporal branches from the anterior division of mandibular nerve deep temporal branch from anterior division of mandibular nerve anterior division of mandibular nerve and what is the action of this muscle it it also causes like this it causes elevation of mandible and results in closure of mouth besides it also causes side to side movement of the jaw during grinding movements movements during grinding movements during grinding movements and it also causes retraction of the protruded mandible retracts protruded mandible So these are the actions. It causes elevation of the mandible and causes closure of the mouth. It also causes side to side movement of the jaw during the grinding movements and it causes retraction of the protruded mandible. The next muscle we are going to discuss about is the lateral pterygoid muscle. So this is the pterygomaxillary fissure, pterygomaxillary fissure. This is the pterygoid plate and There is a mandible. This is a temporal mandibular joint. You can see the articular disc of the temporal mandibular joint. This is the articular disc of temporal mandibular joint. Articular disc of TM joint. And this is the fibrous capsule of the joint so this 
so we are going to discuss about the lateral pterygoid muscle so it has got an upper head which is taking origin from the infratemporal circles and crest of greater window of sphenoid this upper head which is taking origin from the uh, infratemporal surface and crest of greater window of sphenoid This is the upper fiber of the lateral pterygoid muscle. And what about the lower fiber? The lower fiber is taking origin from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. So this is the lower fiber which is taking origin from the this is the pterygoid plane and from the lateral surface of the pterygoid plate is this taking origin. So this is the lateral surface of the pterygoid plate originating from the lateral surface of the pterygoid plate so this is the upper fiber and this is the lower fiber and uh, is getting inserted into the pterygoid phobia on the mandible here you can see a pterygoid phobia on the anterior surface of the neck of mandible pterygoid phobia on anterior surface of neck of mandible and also getting inserted into the the articular discant anterior margin of articular discant capsule of the temporomandibular joint Here you can see it gets inserted into the anterior margin of articular discount and fibrous capsule of temporomandibular joint. So these are the origin and insertion. So it is supplied by the anterior division of branch from anterior division of mandibular nerve. So what are the actions of this? So it is important to know the action of the lateral pterygoid. It causes as against the action of other muscle it causes depression of mandible. Depression of mandible. And causes opening of mouth. Opens mouth. So and the, both the pterygoids that is the lateral and medial pterygoid it is causes it is causing protrusion of mandible protrusion of mandible also and the right medial pterygoid and right lateral pterygoid that is right medial pterygoid and right lateral pterygoid causes deviation of chin to left side deviates chin to left side it is easier to remember here the only muscle which is causing depression of the mandible is lateral pterygoid so depression of the mandible all others will cause elevation of the mandible that's all about lateral pterygoid now we are going to discuss about the medial pterygoid muscle Again, it draw the same diagram. Pterygoid plate is a maxilla. So 
the medial pericoid vessel has got a superficial and a deep fiber, deep head and superficial head. It has got a superficial head and a deep head. The superficial head is taking origin from the tuberosity of the maxilla. So here we are having a tuberosity of maxilla. The superficial head takes origin. This is the maxilla and this is the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the ramus of mandible. The superficial head of the medial pterygoid takes origin from the tuberosity of maxilla. So this is the tuberosity of maxilla from which the superficial head takes origin. So this is the superficial head. The B head takes origin from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and adjoining palatine bone. So taking origin from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. So this is the deep head which is taking origin from the deep medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the deep head taking origin from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate and adjoining process of the palatine bone and it is getting inserted into the rough area on the medial surface of the angle of the mandible rough area on the medial surface of the rough area on the medial surface of angle of mandible angle and adjoining ramus of mandible below and behind the mandibular foramen and mylohyoid group. So that's all about the origin and insertion. So now the nerve supply as against all the muscle it is uh, getting nerve supply from a branch from the main trunk of mandibular nerve it receives a branch from main trunk of mandibular nerve now what is the action of this muscle the action is it causes elevation of the mandible so the only depressor of the mandible is lateral pterygoid it causes elevation of the mandible and causes it closes mouth And we have said that both the lateral and medial pterygoid causes protrusion of mandible. Of mandible. And we know that right medial pterygoid and right lateral pterygoid together causes movement of chin to left side. Deviation of chin to left side and left lateral pterygoid and left to medial pterygoid together causes movement of chin to right side. So these are the actions of medial pterygoid. With this we are ending this video. That's all about the muscles of vascification. Thank you for watching this video. To see more videos on my channel, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.